Peace, peace, peace. What's good? How you in the streets? Indeed, man. How you feeling, my brother? How, how's, how's everything with you and the family? You and the movement? Oh, man, everything is healthy. I came out to the Hip Hop Boulevard event. Got this really nice award, man. It's dope, man. Uh, well appreciated with that, man. Yeah. Got to get some, uh, keep keep the wind dash and keep it shiny <laughs> in the crib. Accolades, man. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's been too long. Yeah. How, how, how has been this experience since from the, the first day you laid tracks in the studio to now? How's been that, how's that experience been? Oh, man, it's life. You know what I mean? My life, at least, you know, um, it's just amazing to see that to grow with the culture, you know what I mean? Yeah. For people to say like 30 years, they've been listening to you and, you know, and they still support you like they did now, even like they did then. Yeah. A lot just, of people don't make it yeah. during that span. And I, and I you know? just want to interject and say, um, uh, since we connected with Shaheem, um, and going to different events and, and certain places. The love goes beyond just being a celebrity. Right, right. Right? right. It's not, you, there's one thing to be like, you can love somebody for juggling, you know, oranges and they become famous for right, it. Right. You know what I mean? That's a different kind of love. I'm talking about this is a genuine love that goes beyond celebrity. When you see people embrace him and say, I followed you and, and your songs got me through, your journey is an inspiration for me from where you came to where a little hiccup in your life where you know up until now. It, it inspires people and I can say that he's truly living this reward, the accolades that he gets, it's not a turn off switch. You don't leave this event and say, oh, now I'm on some other thing or whatever. It is truly what he lives right now. And um, and I salute him. That's my brother. This is the physical, the physical being on earth. It, it brings out other auras and, and perfection from other people by inspiration like yourself and stuff like that. The movement that you've got, helping brothers that are incarcerated and even brothers in the street, man, how did that come about? Um, well, it came about by me being incarcerated myself. So when I was incarcerated, I noticed that the disconnect from our generation to the youth and it was that we got wiped out by the crack epidemic. We got wrapped, wrapped like Giuliani and, and, and um, uh, uh, what's this dude? P P what was the other name? The fucking the, the governor at one time. Pataki. P what the fuck? Pataki. Yeah. Pataki. This governor motherfucker, Pataki. right? Yeah. Just threw us, you know, to the penitentiary. And a lot of our fathers was in the penitentiary, and a lot of our brothers, like for me. When I came out with a record in 1994, yeah. my friends went to prison. Yeah. So a lot of my friends had the same career in the prison system as I had in the music industry. And a lot of them are just getting home now. Yeah. So when I went through my own trials and I went to prison, I said, oh wow, anybody could come here because there's a net that's set there. So it was birthed when I said, I gotta save these youth 20 years right. of, of trying to be something that I wasn't for people who never really gave a fuck. So I just want to tell them that little secret and give them the tools that I got. And hopefully they don't got to go to the penitentiary to get it. So, and that's how I was birthed. And that's my cause, that's my mission. I, I'm a client as well as the president because I need the services my goddamn self every day. Rugged road to recovery, man. We've seen you grow, we seen you grow on TV literally and through the airwaves, man. OGs gave you that battery, and, and, and you know what I'm saying? It, it gave you that 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 road to be successful. And I see you're laying that same that same bricks down. Yeah, you, know what I'm you, you have you have to give it. You have to pay it forward. Yeah. I'll tell you a quick story real quick before we get out of here about paying it forward, right? One day I'm at Dunkin' Donuts on in the drive drive through, and the guy before me paid for my shit. 
I didn't know it. So I'm going to pay. They said, no, the guy in front of you paid it. So I'm like, all right, yo, yo, you made a mistake. He said, no, just pay it for it. I ended up paying for the person behind me. It was a lot cheaper that day, but on other days it became, I'm only getting one coffee and I paid for the next person behind me and they order maybe more. But you never know what a person's going through that day and that kind gesture of maybe paying for their coffee and a donut, now they could have got lunch because you did that. So, so I try to pay it for it. I went through that. That gives me more insight on how people are working in life. You know, the machine, they play us. And as you know, that machine always portrays the, the, the bad. You know what I'm saying? But when you meet people in general, you see that, yo, this world is right. But it's that the machine keeps that negative stuff like that. Well, you got to think about who owns the machine. Yeah. You find out who owns the machine and you find out what their agenda is, then you'll see a lot more clear. Yeah, yeah. How can we, as, I would say the elders right now, right? We can say yeah. we the old and elders. How can we keep that legacy going? How can we even even put more impact where we can fight that machine? Oh, um, whoa. Cool. The only way, the only way to fight a machine is to not turn it on. That's the only way to beat the machine. Yeah, and I want to add on to that. I would say definitely when you, like you just mentioned, in real life, when you're projecting a certain energy, then it erases the concept of that right. machine. Because they like, in real life, I need people yeah. like Sha, like Sean, like you, like everybody here, yeah. and they show me love and their support. Somebody's lying. Somebody's lying. And it's being exposed. And it's being exposed. Yeah. That's it. The way you're helping on and, and, and putting on that, that helps to show yeah. that. Yeah. Well, see, yeah. the, thing, the thing that I like to be clear, right, with things, because sometimes things could get, the wires could get twisted, right? I'm really not in the business of convincing people, right? So this thing ain't trying to convince nobody to do the right thing. I'm just saying, like there's a formula and there's ingredients. If you use these ingredients and follow this formula, you too could have a success rate. And that's it. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? You once quoted that um, back in the day you got offered the role on Friday as a kid that was yeah. taking the can. Yeah. And you passed it because you didn't want to be perceived like well, kicking the can. Well, see, hip hop at that time was very um, critical. Yeah. Like, so things like that could have cost you your career yeah. when they thought that, yo, you wasn't portraying who you were in real life. Like, so I, I made the decision. It was a great movie, you know what I mean? Yeah. Thinking back now as the business, it was something I probably should have did, but my thinking then wasn't about none of that. It was more towards like, how is my community gonna perceive me when they know that's not the rugged child in New York? I don't know where that character did that at, but Stevenson Projects, we didn't kick over garbage cans. You know what I'm saying? So I couldn't have did that. But it's a role too, you know what I'm saying? So I learned that sometimes you gotta show up for the job and just do the job. What the, all that other shit, that's to your personal, put that shit to the side and handle the task that's at hand. What's, what, you got new music coming out? I mean, I, I'm a fan that I want to hear from Shaheem. Is, that, is it coming out or is it out? Um, well, where I'm at now is just on a day-by-day -day basis. Okay. So I don't know, I might wake up tomorrow and create a song and it'll be out tomorrow. That's the luxury yeah, yeah, of yeah. this. <laughs> thing social media yep. we don't gotta wait a whole year to drop no more so if i'm inspired i'll drop some listen something personal that i always ask both of y'all you first what is your top five man Oh man, I would be here forever because I would have to go through each. Give me, give me a nice five that you'll come with. If you get stuck in the island, you got five albums and you can just rock and be like, what, what's your top five? I mean, honestly, I probably would take a beat, a, 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 a whole bunch of instrumentals okay. and just be in my thoughts if I was on the island. <laughs>
So I probably wouldn't be listening to nobody on the island. I'll probably be just listening to beats and just soaking in the moment. You know what I mean? But there's a lot of legends, man. Like I think I think it's unfair. I think we would have to break it down like genre. Not genre. Era, era, or category. So let's just go for for hip hop in the nineties. Okay, now what part of hip hop in the nineties? You talking about underground five, or you talking about those that was commercially accepted? What judge is this? Is it the success of the the album? Because if I go, if I gotta go there, I gotta go with people like just off the top of my head, Jay Wu the Damage Up. Um, uh, 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 um. Um, oh my God, um, Blase Blah, um, OC, um, Organized Confusion, <laughs> it's just so many, it's just like, yo, where, where do I go? Wow. Then we can go Wu-Tang, we can yeah. go Mob yeah. Deep, me, not like, it's just so much, then you can go Common, you can go Chicago. Right yeah, now. yeah, but this is what I'm just saying, right? And I'm not even counting the people I looked up to, the Kane, the Rock Kims, and all that. You know, uh, it's, it's definitely a, a question where it's like it's condensed to the point that you can't, you can't. But for, for conversation, I think the government made that question up. <laughs> I think the government made the question up. The divide us, yeah. I'm a conspiracy theorist. Matter of fact, I'm pumping at the government created what's your top five? <laughs> yeah, to separate us as a people, as, as a movement in hip hop. Um mine was actually out of hip hop. It was it was Stevie Wonder, it was Michael Jackson off the wall. It was Sam Cooke. If I got a hip hop from there, Biggie Ready to Die, probably Nas, uh, uh, the first, you know what I mean? Probably there to start with that. You know? yeah, I'm a hip hop head, yeah, yeah. and then we can get lost in our conversation. Yeah. And it's a privilege to have a conversation with two hip hop heads that nah, are big and then add it on to that. You know what I'm saying? Yo, 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 this is Shaheem underscore Ruggy. And this is Sean Bree. And this is Industry CV. Love.